We're here at the Bronium booth at VMworld 2017, and I'm here with Simon Crosby. Pleasure to have him here. Uh, I think the last time we saw each other was maybe three, four years ago, so uh, I'd love to hear what's new with Bronium and uh, you know what you're showing here at VMworld. Cool. Well, it's great to see you again, Brian. Um, so Bromium, just by way of introduction, um, we took this concept of virtualization. Remember, we founded virtualization in the open source domain in the form of Zen and Zen Source, and we carried it on to its logical extension. So who cares about operating systems anymore? What we do is we isolate apps using hardware isolation on the CPU, so the features that are built into the CPU for hardware isolation of VMs, we use that to hardware isolate apps from each other and from the operating system to make the endpoint arbitrarily secure, but also we can get great density, very, very granular, so we can get scores of VMs on each PC, and so we can make the system massively secure. So you asked what's new, kind of nothing, because we've been doing this for seven years and still nobody's broken it, and that's it's kind of disappointing. But we have a challenge running at the moment. If you think that you want to break it, there is a challenge running to bring your own malware here, or indeed we have a public bug bounty running to try and break into a Bromium protected device. That's uh, pretty incredible. Seven years, right? Nobody's broken it. Right, seven years. So, so what's the model? The model is this. If the, no matter what the user does, anything from the moment I flip open the lid of my, my laptop, anything I click on that comes from the outside goes in a little structure which we call a micro VM. We use the hardware isolation features on the CPU to form this very lightweight structure instantly in tens of milliseconds, which isolates this app from all other apps, this tab from all other tabs in my browser so that no matter what happens, it's a complete don't care. So the moment I close it, it all just gets thrown away and the PC self-remediates. In other words, no bad stuff ever gets through. In each one of these micro VMs, there's nothing to steal. There are no credentials and there's no access to high value networks or sites. And so it's almost as though each one of these is a little sandbox that we can allow people to play in. Now it turns out that the hypervisor is also a great place to introspect the execution of any app. And because there's only one app per micro VM, it's really easy to see what's going on. Now instead of looking for bad, which is what all the antivirus guys do, we just look for deviations from good. And so if a Word doc that you open happens to start encrypting what it thinks is its hard disk, it isn't actually, that's pretty obvious. We're recording all of this and we stream it up to the SOC. But more than that, we then go and hunt for it everywhere else in the enterprise. If we see it anywhere else, we can kill it. So Bromium is not just protection for a single device. Bromium is protection for the entire enterprise because we automatically go and hunt and, and find bad stuff in the enterprise. So what do you think is the future for malware? And you know, do you see trends in some of the new viruses that are coming out? Um, you know, yeah, so the future of malware is, is actually that it's nation state capable. Why? Because nation states aren't very good at looking after their malware. And we've seen this already with um, you know, Petya and so on, that nation states are increasingly using these tools to attack each other and cyber, the cyber domain is a full frontal domain of conflict now and it's pointed not only at military organizations or governments, it's pointed at the commercial sector. And so the bad guy is increasingly well equipped with nation state capabilities. And to be perfectly honest, nation state capabilities can't be detected before they bad, do bad stuff. The only right thing to do is to isolate them. So effectively, every Bromium micro VM is running in the DMZ. You just happen to think of it as a tab in your browser. And so in a world where you cannot hope to detect the bad guy because you don't know what the bad guy is up to, the best thing to do is to completely isolate it, but give the user an unchanged user experience. And so you talk about user experience. Is there any kind of you know, trade-off where by isolating it, are, are, is there any kind of performance difference to the end user? Well, we're going to give you a demo, okay? and we're going to show you right? that, in fact, 
there is no user perceptible difference in performance, but often we can get better than native user experience. Why? Well, let's say you have a user with a bunch of tabs in their browser, each of which is going, going to autoplay some flash video or whatever it happens to be. Bromium knows about this, and so Bromium just does the right thing. So we aren't playing all these crazy videos in the background, we aren't loading flash or whatever. We can make ads click to play, we can make ads disappear, all these sorts of things. So we, we can make a device perform much better than it would normally when you had nothing. Great. Well, you mentioned a demo. Can we uh, take a look at that demo? Sure thing. We'd be delighted to. So let me introduce Ian. Ian is the godfather of virtualization and my co-founder, Bromium. So what are you going to show us? So I'll, I'll just show you what it's like to use a Bromium protected system. Now, in some respects, this is the world's most boring demo because the whole point is it should work just like a regular Windows PC. You know, we have many customers that have Bromium installed on their machines that actually don't even know it's there. They just use the machine just as they do today. But because of the Bromium protection, they can click with confidence. They can open any link they receive in email, open any document they receive, go anywhere on the web, and they know that their machine isn't going to get infected. So on my machine right now, I've got a, a number of applications running. I've got uh, uh, a web browser, let's say it's Chrome with a bunch of tabs in it. Um, I can uh, you know, switch between those tabs. I can bring up uh, Internet Explorer here. Again, I've got a whole bunch of tabs open in Internet Explorer. To really see what's happening under the covers, we need to bring up a tool. Not something that a user would normally see, but it's useful for giving demos. We call it Live View. So here, we can see all of the various uh, VMs which are running on my, my laptop. It's a three-year-old laptop, nothing special about it from a hardware point of view. And I've got, you can see down here, 42 micro VMs running on this laptop, of which 34 are associated with websites, some in uh, Chrome, some in Internet Explorer, and eight with various documents I have open. And as we scroll down here, you can see the various, uh, you know, a couple of Word documents, uh, PowerPoints, PDF files, and lots of tabs in my web browser. Oh. So I scroll back up to the top, and then we go to uh, Internet Explorer. If I uh, bring up a tab and say go to bing.com, we can see the micro VM number 384 is created to go to bing.com. Then if we were to do a, a search for VMworld, that search takes place within that same VM, 384, because it's the same website, Bing. But as soon as I click on that link going to VMworld, micro VM number 385 is created. So every time we go to a new website, we can arrange that we um, always go in a new virtual machine. And if I was to click back, we'll go back to Bing. Again, a new virtual machine is created, micro VM number 386. Creating these virtual machines just takes a few tens of milliseconds. So we don't notice it from a user experience point of view. And, and similarly, if we look at what happens from a, uh, an email point of view, I can bring up my Outlook. I can then you know, click on a link that I've received in, uh, in email, and a new micro VM is created, 388, to follow that link. Or if someone sent me a document, if I click to open that document, a new micro VM is created. In this case, micro VM number 389, which is rendering this Word document. Now this document is interesting because I happen to know it's actually malicious. And the document is just sitting there doing nothing right now. But as I start to interact with the document, as I start to, uh, uh, to scroll down and, and look through the document, that actually wakes the malware up. So this document, the malware has been written to make it hard to detect. So that if this was a, a box in the network that was just trying to look at this document, decide whether it was good or bad, it would really struggle because the malware isn't doing anything bad until there's a user present, until there's a user to interact with it. Now I've woken the malware up. It is actually, happens to be a, uh, some, some ransomware. It's going around encrypting all of the files within that virtual machine right now. And in a few seconds, we're gonna see a ransom node appear. But I don't have anything to worry about because the only files that are present within that virtual machine is the document that we're viewing just that particular document, none of my other documents, uh, there's none of my credentials, password hashes, there really is nothing to steal within this virtual machine. Right. And now the, uh, the ransom note has appeared. And if we look, we can see that the ransom note 
is just within that Word document. It's not on my desktop. It's contained within the virtual machine which is rendering the Word document. So it's, it's been able to encrypt just that file and we can also put other plant other files within that virtual environment. So if you, you could put some documents in there that you perhaps wanted a bad guy to find and perhaps steal from you because they contain misinformation or were uh, enabled you to track who the, where the bad guys were coming from. Some of our uh, more sophisticated customers, government customers, choose to do that sort of thing. But the way I can deal with this malware infection is really straightforward. I could just go and close the Word document. I click close on the document, and now that virtual machine has been destroyed. So I've had, uh, you know, I've, I've lost nothing. Uh, right. There's nothing to steal. There's nowhere for the, uh, the malware to go, and there's no way for it to persist. So my machine is just back to, uh, to its pristine state. Now in the background, you see that MicroVM still existing for a few seconds. That's right. because right now it's uploading a whole load of threat intelligence about what happened to a management server which might sit within an organization's SOC, Security Operations Center. So now they have that entire kill chain of exactly what that malware was doing. And I can kind of show you what that looks like briefly. I can um, uh, log in to our, uh, our management console. So for all of the machines which are running Bromium, they would be connecting into this console. Um, you can see obviously information about the, uh, the health of the environment. But the most interesting information is when we click on the threats tab. So this is showing us all of the various instances that have occurred. And then we can uh, uh, you know, click on one to get more detail about what, uh, what happened. So here we can, uh, can see uh, that piece of malware which we were, we were just looking at. So we're able to look at that threat intelligence we collected, that black box flight recorder trace of everything the malware was doing, and we can see that it was crypto malware, that it was uh, made use of techniques like privilege escalation. It's trying to persist itself by updating the operating system boot settings. And then I can see exactly how the malware played out, all of the interactions of all of the processes. I can see the connections it's making to its command and control servers. And then if you want to, you can dive in to get even more detail, to actually look at the full flight recorder trace, showing us exactly what happened. So we can click on that node, see exactly how the malware persisted itself by modifying various registry settings. So we have all of the information we need to then go and look on other machines, perhaps machines which aren't running Bromium, and be able to check whether they've had these changes made to them. Of course, if you run Bromium on all of your machines, there really is nothing to do. You're just fully protected. Your users can go around, click on anything, and they're not going to end up with their machines compromised. That's pretty incredible. Well, thanks for taking the uh, time to show us the uh, demo, and uh, we're excited to see where, where you guys go next. Well, thanks.